Well, my story is not a unique uh, story. It's a story of millions of people in this country, uh, in London, in Leicester, um, where I grew up in a very sort of humble sort of economic background in India, in a small city called Indore in uh, Madhya Pradesh. Um, I had good education. I uh, came, I, I was actually, after I finished my education, I was in my first job. I remember um, 5,000 rupees, 5,000 rupees a month was my my salary. I worked uh, there and I got an opportunity to come to the UK uh, in 2001. I'd never been on a plane before, uh, never been outside India before, uh, but I came to the UK as a 24 year old uh, young man uh, whose pockets were filled with dreams. Uh, and I came here, I worked very hard after working in a job for three years. I set up my own uh, business in fintech, uh, which uh, was uh, very successful. At, uh, I took it to great levels and expanded it. Uh, but then I uh, uh, diverted all my energies to public services, which is where all my um, uh, passion always lied. So I worked with a number of charities. I worked with Oxfam and the Princess Trust and I was a trustee in Sherry Blair Foundation for Women. But then I realized that if you want to bring change in the society at a big scale, you got to get involved in politics and policy. And for that reason, I got more involved with the Labour Party. And then I had the opportunity of being the deputy mayor uh, of one of the greatest cities on earth, uh, not once, but twice for two terms as a deputy mayor for business, uh, responsible for London's economic development, uh, bringing foreign investment in London, promoting London around the world, uh, and so on. And it was a uh, it was a great opportunity. Um, so, you know, UK is a country which is full of opportunities. And m like I said, my story is not a unique story. It's a story of so many migrant workers from around the world who have made this country their home, and with their sheer hard work and grit, made a huge success. Many people from India, uh, whether directly or via East Africa or other countries, came to this country. And now they are serving this country uh, in so many different capacities across so many um, areas and industries, whether it's politics, whether it's the prime minister of this country, uh, whether uh, it's um, in the other senior positions in the government, in the private sector, in entrepreneurship, in hospitality, in retail, in financial services, um, and so many of them are also serving in our public services, in the NHS, um, in the police, uh, in the armed forces, and uh, many, many other areas. So it's a great example of how um, these people who come from around the world make this city, make this country uh, their home, enrich it further, not just economically, but culturally, and strengthen it. My parents uh, live in India, so I visit them quite uh, regularly uh, in Indore. And interestingly, just uh, last J or January this year, um, the Pravasi Bharti Sammelan, which is the gathering of the biggest gathering of Indian diaspora held, hold, uh, held by the government of India, uh, was in Indore. Uh, so I attended it uh, and it was fantastic to see so many people from Indian community from around the world gathering in the city where I was born and grew up um, and to mingle with them. And Indian community is a great example of a community which works incredibly hard uh, wherever in the world they are uh, and make uh, and contribute uh, to those countries, but maintain their connection uh, with uh, India as well at the same time, and they act as a living bridge between the country of their residence, where they belong, with, and, the, and India. Um, and I see the role of Indian diaspora go, going from strength to strength in that. I mean, take example of the UK. Um, just in, in the UK alone, there are about 1.7 million people of Indian origin, and they play a huge role in strengthening the ties between UK and India. And I'm just one of them, uh, uh, but, but you know, we, we, we continue to call, contribute. The Indian community has always supported Labour Party for years and years and years. 
Um, and I know that many in the community feel that Labour took a wrong path, but I know under Keir Starmer, Labour Party is under new management, uh, and there's huge amount of work that is being done to reach out to the Indian community. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm doing a lot of work in that direction. I'm also the chair of Labour Friends of India, uh, which is also reaching out to the communities um, and uh, and building those those bridges again. But vast majority of uh, the community supports the Labour Party as it has always done for decades. I still remember reading in the books of history that in 1945 general election, um, it was the Labour Party's manifesto uh, that was committed for uh, independence uh, for for this for India, and uh, then when uh, the the Labour Party won the general election, that's when uh, they passed the Indian Act of Independence um, at the time. So always Labour Party has been a huge supporter uh, of uh, communities of Indian community. Uh, and really value the contribution made by the Indian community. Well, I'm very proud uh, that I got the opportunity to serve uh, London as its deputy mayor for business for nearly eight years. Um, and in that eight years, uh, you've seen very difficult economic background, uh, whether it's the political and economic uncertainty caused by Brexit, uh, whether it's the biggest pandemic in 100 years, uh, and now the cost of living crisis and the huge amount of inflation. But despite all these challenges, I managed to, along working alongside the mayor, uh, managed to um, create hundreds of thousands of new jobs, uh, improve the working conditions of hundreds of thousands of Londoners and bring uh, billions of pounds in foreign investments. One thing uh, which I think your audience will find quite interesting is uh, India is the fastest growing major economy in the world. And as such, I put a huge amount of focus on India uh, because I believe that UK and India are the uh, are, are very strong partners in the new world order. And because of that, we opened three offices uh, to market London uh, in India. And as a result of that, I'm very proud that last year, uh, India became the largest investor in London. So that is a huge achievement. When I started as deputy mayor, India was the fourth largest investor in London. But by the time I left, it had become the largest investor uh, in London. So I believe that I've done uh, my bit, uh, even in a small way, to bring the two countries closer together. Well, there's been a series of negotiations, and I know there's a strong will on both sides uh, in it, from, it, from India and from the UK uh, to maximize on the opportunities to work together. And FTA is uh, one of those, those opportunities. Uh, it's important that we maximize the value uh, under this free trade agreement. And it's not just a watered down version. So it's important that it's thorough uh, and it truly realizes the potential that exists between, between the two countries. And, to me, that's the most uh, important things. I'm not privy to a uh, huge amount of detail uh, in terms of the negotiations, but I do hope uh, sincerely that both the parties are thinking not just short term, but actually long term benefits to both the countries. And I believe the interests of India and that of the UK are actually very strongly uh, aligned uh, in, the, uh, in, in the sort of new post Brexit and post COVID world that we live in. It's a hugely exciting uh, time. It's, I believe that the country is at the crossroads. Uh, what happens at the next general election truly will decide uh, the future of uh, this country uh, in a sort of post-Brexit and post-COVID uh, world. In last seven years that I've been uh, the deputy mayor uh, of London, I've actually seen five prime ministers uh, I've lost the count of how many homes, uh, housing secretaries, how many business secretaries and so on. And for a country that is known for its political stability, uh, this is not great. Uh, when I talk to investors from around the world, they look for certainty and predictability and stability. And that's what Labour government will offer uh, going forward. 
Um, and I just want to finally say that Labour Party is fully committed uh, to strength in strengthening the ties uh, with India. India is the fastest growing major economy in the world. Uh, it's the world's largest democracy. Uh, and it's only natural that India and the UK are uh, very strong allies uh, in the new post-Brexit and post-COVID world. Thank you.